political activity and former senator in the Eighth Assembly, Shell Sonny has described adequate provision for education in the nation's budget as a substantial measure to address the marriage of poverty that is breeding insecurity in the country. Senator Shell Sonny said this at a press week lecture organized by the Oshun State National Union of Journalists, NUJ, in Oshogbo. Shell Sonny described the lecture of insecurity and deplorable situation of roads in the nation as factor enabling kidnapping and other forms of insecurity and flourish across the nation. He charged concern Nigeria to contribute their quarters to the sustainability of Nigeria as a nation. Need to be preserved and protected. And there are toxic dangers that we need to guide against. And this, like I've said earlier, are the following. We don't need an intolerant executive. We don't need a psychophantic legislature. We don't need a timid judiciary. We also don't need a docile civil society. We also don't need a political class that fans the embers of ethnic and religious hatred in our society. These are issues that we need to guide against if we are interested in protecting the unity and the indivisibility of Nigeria as it is. Uh, we are a country that is 20 years into a democracy and the challenges are apparent. Uh, if we have to provi pre prevent the reversal of our democratic gains, then we need to take action against those dangers that today poses a serious threat. Uh, people who find themselves in the position of power must respect the rule of law, must obey court orders, must also be pioneers and a shining example for unity and peace in the country irrespective of our political differences. But what is most important for us is that we must respect the Constitution, preserve our democracy, and also protect the unity and sanctity of Nigeria as an individual nation. Uh, as journalists, you have a duty to speak truth to power and to hold the government in power to account, and also have no fear. There is now a regime of fear where people are afraid of being arrested, and when they are arrested, they are afraid of court orders not being obeyed for them to be released. But we should all look at it, that it will pay more. It will be more beneficial, more morally advantageous to people in power if they respect court orders and also respect the sanctity of our democracy. Uh, what people in power need to understand is that power is transient. If you are in power today, you may not be in power tomorrow. And it is only that rule of law, those democratic values, principle, and spirit that will protect you when eventually you become an ordinary citizen. That has been the message of this conversation. And I believe also it has been the compass of this press week here in Oshobo in Ocean State. I think we need to understand that uh, the civil society need to work and concert with security agencies to address the problems that we face as a nation. We also need to understand that the civil society is doing a patriotic job, a selfless job, risking their lives, providing relief and succor to victims of banditry and insurgency in wherever they find themselves in this country. So it would be wrong for the insurgents to be now be kidnapping and killing uh, international NGOs and local NGOs uh, elements, and at the same time they are facing unnecessary pressure and demonization from the side of the government. There's need to have a synergy, a sync between the civil society and uh, the government and security agencies in order to address our challenges. But we must understand that Nigeria is at war on all fronts. War in the Northwest against bandits and kidnappers, and war in the Northeast against insurgents. And I think we shouldn't deceive ourselves to say that we have technically defeated them when they have 
they continue to launch attacks and killing people and targeting soft points in our country. And people are now kidnapped each and every day. I think whatever achievement a government can claim to have made, uh, it can't be counted when the people of that country are not safe and secure in their own land. Speaking on the team, bridging the gap between the rich and the poor, Great speaker at the event, Akin Ogumbi, stated that the bad leadership is the major hindrance militating against the nation's God-given natural and economic endowments. Akin Ogumbi maintained that good governance that promotes transparency and accountability is the panace to reducing poverty and underdevelopment bedwilling in the nation. Talking about building the gap between the rich and the poor, and uh, unfortunately, we cannot even talking of we cannot talk of the poor any longer because Nigeria has been, has been classified as the poverty capital of the world, despite the fact that we live in abundance. So the whole essence of the message it boils down on one single thing: leadership. Our leaders, when they find their same position of leadership, they should know that it's providence that put them there. Whatever it, what, what exactly again do you want? If you want you aspire to be a leader, and providence has put you there, discharge your duties with the fear of God and service to humanity. A whole lot of this we are clamoring for, the only thing that can make a change is to have true leadership, people who actually get there to pursue the building of an egalitarian society, who ensure that resources of the state are deployed to build capacity that will give everybody, the child of the poor, the child of the rich, the necessary advantage to move on in life. That is all the whole essence. And of course, I appeal to the citizens, to the, to the citizenry, that the way and manner our leadership emerge is again very unfortunate because people don't choose leaders on the basis of merit, capacity and capability to deliver in government, in, in, gov in, the, in the governance of the state. Rather, they are chosen on the basis of deep pocket. This is the unfortunate aspect of it. If a person that is not qualified in the first instance find himself in the position of leadership, what can you do for him to perform? Absolutely nothing. Even if you put the very best of brains around him, you know if the final bus stop is, he, he calls the shot and everybody hang, everything hangs on his table. So the leadership, and the followership. The followership, they should take keen interest in who becomes the leader so that they cannot put interest in immediate gain of collecting mid ticket or money for vote. Let them do due do, do, do diligence on who emerges as leaders. And when leaders get to a leadership position, they should remember that it is providence that has put them there and they should serve people with the fear of God. Osho State Commissioner of Information, Funke Egbemori, urge political leaders to always strive toward the betterment of future of the electorate. It's about looking good. The state must look good. Everybody must perceive the state as the state of the virtues, the state of uh, good people, those who want to make a difference. The governor must look good. It's about looking good. The governor is working hard. And we must not make it look like that chicken that is uh, working hard, is sweating, but the feathers can't know. Everything that the governor is doing must be amplified, must be known within the states to the people who elected him and outside, so everybody knows that Oshun is working. Chairman NUJ Oshun State, Comrade Kende Anyatunji, charged government to prioritize provision of quality health and education and other infrastructure that could guarantee better future for the citizen. Members of the fourth estate of the realm, we have responsibility to, to set agenda for the nation. And one of the fundamental concerns that we have as a union is the level of poverty in Nigeria. And it seems things are not changing. Since 1962 and 2018, we have had up to five developmental agenda. We have Operation Feed the Nation, Vision 2020, we have uh, Vision 2010, we have uh, SDG, MDG, and SDG. Unfortunately, poverty is still evident in the face of our people. In fact, the last report of the UNDP was that 
Nigeria only succeeded in achieving six out of 36 Millennium Development Goal, which has to do with poverty. And that since we're not even achieved substantially, this was partly achieved. So we now use this 2019 press week to, to converge the intellects across the country to discuss the issue of poverty because there is no way we can separate poverty from insecurity, there is no way we can separate poverty from our political development, and there is no way we can separate poverty from economic development. So the moment we have the issue of poverty resolved, Nigeria will continue to grow and develop as a nation. De definitely there can. What is the necessity, what is the fundamental thing that a man needs? You need a very good medical facility, you need a very good school, you need a very good road. The moment you have this, these are the lost things that the rich enjoy. And the moment you have this in any nation, you don't even need to acquire more than what you need. So that's the gap we are asking for. We are not talking that everybody should buy a uh, limousine, everybody should be using Rolls Royce. But as a citizen of Nigeria, you must have access to basic amenities, such as quality health, quality education, security, and best infrastructure that you can have in any part of the world. That is the gap we are talking about. We are not talking about the gap of luxury, we are not talking about the gap of uh, the number of houses you acquire, or the luxury of cars you are using. But as human beings, you must live a dignified life. That's our contention.